Uh, my name's Mark McTeer, I'm Head of Science here at John Monash Science School. Each lesson we have specific learning outcomes. For this particular lesson we wanted the students to understand the different stages of meiosis uh, and how meiosis is similar or different to mitosis. To start off with for today's lesson, I've got the question for you to consider. List three differences and three similarities between mitosis and meiosis. The way that we structure a lesson is uh, typically we will have a, we'll start off with an engager where the students will get started on a particular activity to trigger their, their mind or their memory or their thinking on the topic that we're, we've either just covered in the previous lesson or something that we're going to be doing this lesson. Then the next things that we, we worked on the lesson was to have some uh, specific delivery around what meiosis is. So the way that I did that was to structure a, a lesson based on some key guided questions that they were to answer as we watched uh, an animation. Okay, we'll give you a couple of minutes to write some answers to those questions in there. You may need to watch the video again and you've got the link um, in the PowerPoints. Some of the things that um, are important in terms of differences, and Miss Mix can be pointing them out just before. In mitosis, the chromosomes line up. They need enough time to be able to hear from us a bit about some of the main knowledge and, and content, but they also need time to absorb it and to start constructing their own ideas and to draw and demonstrate their understanding. And so in today's class, we've got them to do that by uh, drawing a chart of meiosis and showing the different uh, phases and what are the key uh, points that, or key things that are happening at each of those phases. When we set a particular task for the students and give them activity to do, we guide the lessons by walking around and interacting one-on-one -on -one with students. And it's not until you get really deep that you can find any misconceptions. If you just leave it at a very surface level, what are you doing? I'm doing the diagram. Oh, it looks nice, well done, and move on to the next student. You don't get to it. You've said different cells are produced. What do you mean different? Oh, How are they different? Identical, like my is two identical cells. Okay. And then these are different. So genetically different and yeah, genetically yeah. identical. Excellent. I met with a student earlier, um, she, I asked her some questions and she was really quite stark. And I could have just said, oh, here's the answer and off you go. But for that point there, I said, I want you to read and do a little bit of research. I'll come back in two or three minutes. Do you know what sort of daughter cells they are? Yeah. Tiplet and the, May? That's the mitosis ones. Okay. Uh, gametes. Gamma, yes, very good gametes. Excellent. So what are gametes? Um, I'll give you one or two minutes to do a bit of research and I'll come back and check to see what you've got okay. So I'd wander around and then have a chat with a few other students and then come back again and, and say okay what did you learn about this and she'd, she'd learn something, she'd come up with something and, and researched it. What have you found out? It takes place in the somatic mitosis and meiosis takes place in the germ cells. Very good. Every aspect of the course that we do is online, so we use Google Apps and, as our platform to, to deliver uh, the courses to students, and that includes the, the sites, shared Google Docs, such as Sheets and PowerPoints and everything like that. And that enables us to easily tweak and modify resources as we go to make them accessible to the students. It sort of changes the way learning occurs because the students are able to access this at any time. They will look at things before school, after, at home time. Uh, they will share Docs with one another and learn um, collaboratively with each other and also with the teachers. We set them on a particular task and they'll use their computer or their tablet and research as well. So collaboration in our school is, is vital and I guess the, the, at the heart of what we do in terms of team teaching here. So we will communicate, so I'll tend to sit down and, and, and meet and, and talk with the teaching partner that I have and we'll talk through all those issues and ideas and contexts um, around that particular lesson. We'll tweak and modify resources as need be. So in the middle of class when, when we're teaching we'll interrupt one another and, and, and talk and explain and give ideas about how we think the students are going to need a bit more time. Are there common misconceptions, uh, did we not explain the task well enough. And here they're going through what, 10 steps or 15 steps, what about if you're just going from first, yeah that's right. And we give each other feedback and reflection on each other's teaching as well as how the students are going. It's a, a very dynamic environment, it's a very fluid environment where we um, are open to learning but also and, and, and teaching one another but also making sure uh, that the students are getting the most out of the lesson.